threat of violence is in harsh contrast to the serene look of this quiet street. The police have their hands full trying to keep people out of the danger zone. These people full of morbid curiosity always make doubly difficult the job of the police who have the thankless task of keeping them needlessly endangering their own lives. Additional emergency equipment has been requested by Lieutenant Jameson, who is in command here. Stay tight on Slattery. Are you here as an attorney or a legislator, Mr. Slattery? Well, a little of uh, each. Do you think you can talk Rowan into obeying that court order? I'll have a statement to make when I come out. What makes you so sure that you will be coming out of there, Mr. Zoom in on that gun. You know I'm acting as Mr. Roseberry's attorney. I'm here to help you. Please, Jim. Let him in. Jim, I've got to talk to you. Open the door. They've given us a 10-day extension in the court order. What happens in 10 days? Well, whatever happens, I want you to make an agreement with me. That all depends. Now, look, I'm not going to be able to help you if you go around playing with guns. He might be able to help us. Please, Jimmy. I'm representing Mr. Roseberry's adoption agency before the welfare board. If he keeps his license, you won't have any problem keeping Judy, you understand? Well, hi, Judy. Hi. Oh, did you take a nice nap? Yeah. Are you happy here? Yes, yeah. I like my bed. Oh, yeah, that's a beautiful bed. Have, uh, have Mr. and Mrs. Rowan been good to you? They're gonna give me a little duck. No, a real duck? Oh, that'll be fun, won't it? But then you want to stay here, don't you? Yeah. Come on, sweetheart, let's get dressed. And whatever threatens to take her away will have to be somehow eliminated. But you've got to promise me, no matter what the delay, to comply with the law. Give her to them? Now, it could be just temporary. Oh, no, it wouldn't be. Once now, they got a hold of her, you've got to obey the regulations, Jim, until they're waived. Now, I'd like to go over everything once again from the beginning, just so it'll be fresh in my mind. As I understand it, there are uh, several of these orphanages in Korea. Is that right? There was one in Seoul near the base where Jim was stationed. I couldn't forget those pathetic little babies left over from the war. Did you, uh, did you consider adopting one of them there? No. Not until we came back to the States and Jim got his discharge. I wasn't able to have a baby. And the adoption agencies kept turning us down for one thing and then another. I guess I just became determined to have a Korean baby. Well, we couldn't afford to go back again and adopt one. Then we heard about Mr. Roseberry's independent adoption agency. Well, it was like a godsend. But now they... All because we didn't go through a state bureau. That's the trouble nowadays, bureaucrats. Judy. Well, it isn't fair. It just isn't. Well, we've had her for months. 
We're not going to let that happen, are we? Poor baby, she doesn't know what's happening. All these people pushing and pulling just because we want to be allowed to love her. Fellow Rowan is quite a boy, standing up to the encroaching bureaucracy with conviction and birdshot. Real frontier spirit. You don't see enough of it these days. Oh, well, I admire Jim Rowan's spirit and conviction, but not his defiance of the law. Well, any law that keeps children from food and love is a law that should be challenged. I think the law should be changed. Well, that could be the next step of the commission rules against your license. Mr. Slattery, I've been conducting a perfectly legal adoption agency since the end of the Korean War. I've placed thousands of orphans that might have been lost, forgotten by the time the state got around to placing them. You know, the Rowans seem like awfully good parents for Judy to die. Well, they are. Well, I'm just curious. Why is the state so determined to take her away from them? I mean, uh, Jim's a little emotional, but... Uh... Oh, it's got nothing to do with the Rowans. It's me they're fighting. The Department of Welfare has been trying to do everything they could to keep me from finding homes for these kids. They ought to be ashamed of themselves. How'd you get started in this work, Mr. Roseberry? Well, when the uh, war broke out in Korea, my wife heard about these children of calamity, I guess they call them. You know, uh, helpless, starving, abandoned children. Well, Ellen uh, lost a number of her own before they were born, so it's kind of natural that her heart would go out for these kids that at least had a chance to live. Well, we were in the process of bringing some of them back. And, uh, she was shot by the communists during a raid on a village. I'm sorry. This is Kenny, my master carpenter. Very good airplane builder. Come on. I'll show you the rest of the family. Have you ever adopted any of these children yourself? No, I'm a, I'm kind of a legalized middleman. No, I, I go to Korea to represent prospective parents there in the courts and bring children back for adoption. Uh, Joe and Peter, and here's Rachel, and there's Elizabeth. Oh, you won't remember any of their names. But I guarantee you'll never forget their faces. They're Americans now. What's your name? What are you, Ethan? I'm not American. I'm a cowboy. You're a cowboy. You're also a troll king sent here to plague me. That's what you are. All right, now all <laughs> of you go on off to your mission. Go on to the court before I swivel your head so you can't tell which way you're walking. Where I found my little cowboy, I eat in a garbage heap, in an actual garbage heap. I just happened to see his little brown legs sticking out from some broken bottles and rest. Somebody left him there to starve, die. They're offspring of servicemen stationed in Korea. Fathers don't want them. The Koreans won't accept them in their culture. Mothers are ostracized till they give them up. Dessert. So, you have a lot of children wandering around in a war-despoiled country, wandering like 
starving little animals in their cut-down GI jackets. We have so much in this country, and we have childless mothers and fathers waiting in line for thousands of children, just like these. Now you tell me, Mr. Slattery, are we going to leave those children to starve and die just because of outmoded laws and bureaucratic rigmarole? Here are those budget amendments you wanted, Mr. Slattery. No, thanks, John. Did you uh, talk to those people at World Social Services? Uh-huh. They support the Welfare Department's point of view on foreign adoption. Something wrong someplace. There's so much red tape and complexity of law involving foreign adoptions that it's almost overwhelming. Visas, medical examinations, release of parents that can't be found. And then when they get here, it starts all over again. Immigration, social welfare, the whole... You're not quite as good looking. As good looking as uh, whom? Not whom. When? I've seen you on the floor of the house. Well, I'm sorry if I'm a disappointment in uh, uh, repose. What can I do for you? I'd like you to listen to some facts, Mr. Slattery. Regarding what? Orphans. Uh, don't tell me you're from the Department of uh, Social Welfare. That's right. And I want you to know that I resent you. <laughs> Why? Because you're sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. Your name wouldn't be Donlin, would it, Vera? Donlin? Yes. Thanks, John. Come in, Miss Donlin. Come in. Yes, I, uh, I've heard about you. As a matter of fact, I've been warned about you. Well, uh, I come from a long line of obstinate Irish. You fought through quite a bit of adoptive legislation. Revolution against the old forms is part of my heritage. Well, why don't you join me on the barricades in the Rowan Manor? Because I think you're involved in a situation that you know nothing about. Well, I've made a, a pretty thorough investigation of the facts regarding foreign adoptions, Miss Donnelly. You haven't asked me. No, it's, I've asked your assistant, Mrs. Uh, Hamilton. And she gave me the state's point of view. Well, she isn't as passionate as I am. I'm not sure we're talking about the same thing. Well, I'm talking about public opinion, Mr. Slattery, which is very important to me. I'm talking about the sides that are being taken over Angus, Rosebury, and the Rowan child. See, the state is being pushed into a position of fighting misinformation and sentiment with logic, which, as you know, is an uphill struggle all the way. Well, the important issue to me is the welfare of my client. You're not just an attorney, you're a legislator. Your involvement in this case could affect the laws of adoptive procedure. Like other people who have become emotionally involved with these children and their parents, you're losing sight of the important issues. No, oh, it could be, Miss Donnelly. But the commission's already set a hearing, so we're well on our way. You could drop the case. I could, but I won't. Why? Are you afraid to back down? I wouldn't be an attorney or a legislator if I were. I'm only trying to make things easy for those children. What about the black market? What about the buyers and sellers of children? Should we make it easy for them, too? I don't think that Angus Roseberry falls into that category. It doesn't end with him. This is not just a local problem. You could set a precedent that will affect policies throughout the country. Finding children for parents like uh, Jim and Annette Rowan isn't a bad policy. How do you know they're good parents? How do you know they're not? Well, I'm late for a meeting, Miss Donlin. If you'll excuse me. No, I won't excuse you. I won't accept your unwillingness to listen to me. I fought bullheadedness all my life. No, no, wait just a minute. No. Don't patronize me either. I believe in what I'm doing, too. These children need protection as well as love. Protection from exploiters, and protection from well-meaning but unskilled bunglers who don't know the harm they're causing. You think about that, Mr. Slattery.
working all. You've got to duck. Well, you know what they say, never break a promise to a child. So I had to go and pick him up. Is the coast clear? Well, she's in her room teaching her doll how to dance. I'll go get her. Don't spoil the surprise. Did everything go all right at work? Mr. Gross wasn't mad about the time off. Didn't dock me dime one. Hey, some of the guys want to set up a defense fund for us. Come on, Beck. Jim? Yeah? See if Judy's in our room. What's the matter? I left her in her bedroom. She's not there. Oh, she's not here. Look at what? I'll bet she's playing hide and seek in the closet. I told you to keep that window locked. I didn't open it. They must have come in here and taken her. They had no right. Jim, they wouldn't dare. We had a restraining order. They had no right. I'm gonna go and find her and try to kill somebody. <laughs> Jim, please, let's call Mr. Slattery. No, Mr. Slattery. Daddy, Daddy. Judy, where have you been? Look at the duck, Mommy. Look at the duck. <laughs> it was a surprise, Judy. You like it? <laughs> They're just about ready to start. Oh, good. Is Roseberry here yet? Haven't you heard? See that room off there? Flattery. Good to see you. How are you, Mr. Roseberry? Never better. Never better. I heard you were going to bring down some of your adoptive parents and their children. That's quite a group. Yes, indeed. Some of them have come hundreds of miles to appear before the board. There'll be a testimonial to the kinds of homes we can find for these children in America. No, I think it'll help a great deal. Come on. I want you to meet them. I wonder if I could uh, talk to you for just a second first. Of course. Any problem? Oh, no. I'm just, uh, just curious. What's your criterion? How do you decide what makes a good parent? Love of man and fear of God. And obviously you, uh, you feel that the Rowans qualify on both counts. I've lived a long time, Mr. Slattery. I think I know good people when I see them. The Rowans are two of the best. As a family, the worst you could say about them is that they were incomplete. Come on. This is Mr. Slattery. He's going to speak to the board on our behalf. Mr. Please, and Mrs. Mr. Samuels. That's a Samuels. pleasure, Mr. Slattery. My wife and I certainly hope you can help others to be as happy as we are with Kevin here. Well, I hope so, too. It's a pleasure meeting all of you. Mr. Slattery, the chairman is calling the meeting to order. We'd better go in now. Yes, you better go in and take your seats. Uh, Mr. Roseberry, won't you let me talk to you? I don't think we have anything to discuss. We want to work in conjunction with you, Mr. Roseberry. We want to use your knowledge and experience. The state doesn't think I have the experience to place children. No, no, it's your methods that we quarrel with. It's a certain lack of thoroughness in selecting the parents. Miss Donlan, the heart sees many things that the mind often misses. Slattery, if anybody had used that logic on the floor of the house, he wouldn't get one eye vote. Certainly not from you. Well, up to this point, Miss Donlan, your logic lacks the punch of his. How do you arrive at that scholarly conclusion? Hmm? Examine the evidence in the hearing room. Exhibit A, happy parents. Exhibit B, happy children.
Now, we admit that uh, Mr. Roseberry has at times failed to adhere strictly to these regulations, but we also feel that the results of his work warrant special consideration. Therefore, I'm requesting that this special commission waive any such procedures that tend to conflict with or inhibit Mr. Roseberry in his legal right to place foreign children in American homes. You understand the state's point of view regarding Mr. Roseberry? Yes, I do, Mr. Chairman. I'm not sure that it's a fair appraisal. Mr. Roseberry has found excellent homes for a great many children. I don't feel that it would be to the benefit of anyone to place his license in jeopardy. We quarrel with his qualifications to determine what is an excellent home, Mr. Slattery. Well, I don't think you can quarrel with the results. These are happy, well-adjusted children. Do you consider the uh, Immigration Department study of prospective parents uh, adequate? It's more than sufficient, and you know it. Your unreasonable attempt to retain jurisdiction over adoption is keeping thousands of children like these from being sheltered and fed and taught and healed and above all loved. We're not on trial here, Mr. Roseberry. No, no, it's the future of hundreds of children that's on trial here. Mr. Roseberry, I cannot condone this type of outburst in this hearing. I, I'm sorry, sir. I... May I speak now? If Mr. Slattery's finished. Certainly. There's a, an old Korean proverb. When the sharks fight, the minnows get hurt. In war, it's the children who suffer most. I think we're well aware of the misery that has existed in Korea since the war. You haven't been there. You haven't seen it. Hordes of tiny urchins wandering the streets from Seoul to Jeju Island. I, 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 I'm still haunted by the sight of minnows like Mimi. You know where I found Mimi? Huddled in a gutter with pipe stem legs and a swollen stomach, too weak to cry or even brush away the flies. Mr. Roseberry, what we're trying to determine here are your qualifications. Well, these are my qualifications. Look at their faces. Kevin here was begging and stealing for two years to survive. Kim and Alice. These two were found fighting over a dinner of roasted rat. Now they're with people who care for them and love them. How do you know they're good homes, Mr. Rosebury? I look at the people. I look at the people, and I know. You can't play Russian roulette for the lives of children, Mr. Rosebury. Spin the barrel and hope for the best. And you can't keep denying them homes and love because of a lot of senseless barriers. Adoption is designed to integrate a child as a permanent part of the family. Sir, you, you don't match children with parents by charts and computers. You've got to incorporate some personal concern as well as common sense into this program. Mr. Roseberry, we've offered to work with you on this. I, I can only be effective if I can continue in my own way to do whatever has to be done, what my heart tells me has to be done. Gentlemen, thousands of children are still living like animals in streets and alleys. They're rotting in overcrowded orphanages. Please, I beg of you, don't let laws and red tape make their struggle for life an impossible dream. Any further comment, Mr. Slattery? Yes, thank you. Mr. Roseberry placed these children without any fuss or bother. They were made whole again by good American families. I don't think you can deny thousands of other Mimi's and Kevin's the loving arms of mothers and fathers. They need your help. And they need his help. Thank you, Mr. Uh, this board will reconvene on Wednesday the 14th to uh, render a final decision on the matter of the continuance of Mr. Oldbury's license. This hearing is adjourned.
I'd say it looked pretty good, Jim. There was some strong opposition, but I think the meeting went in our favor. And you think they may let Mr. Roseberry keep his license? They'll make a final decision the uh, day after tomorrow. I'm sure that two members of the board were with us, and Roseberry might have struck home with a couple of the others. It looks good. Uh, do you think they might change their minds about taking Judy away from us if he keeps his license? Well, there's a very good chance of that. I'll call you right after the meeting. Give my best to Annette and Judy. Bye. Your drink's getting cold, Slattery. To protect the beat generation from the self-appointed guardians of public morals. Uh oh. Yeah. Speaking of female legislative advocates, you're talking about my date. She's lobbied some of the best of us, Slattery. It's hard to stand up against such objectivism. And all you've got on your side is some poor, hungry orphans. But would you mind, please, to... Mm -mm. Oh, uh, we just remembered we have an early morning interview with the president. Yes, my best. Hello. Stanley? Aren't you afraid of tarnishing your image? Oh, no, it's not corrosive. Uh, in that case, I'll join you. What would you like? Uh, vodka with a twist, please. I'm uh, sorry I couldn't stop by and pick you up. I want you to think I always make my days just kind of better. I can take care of myself. I know. You've earned quite a reputation with the legislators. Now, one of them once told me that uh, I always start a discussion with my dukes up, my chin up. I'm Irish, too, Miss Don. Dance with me. I promise not to lobby. Oh, that's a deal. Uh, would you send the drinks and uh, uh, Miss Donlan's wardrobe to the table, please? Your uh, lace curtain. Both. Have you ever been to a wake, a real Irish wake? No, I can't say that I ever have. I went to my uncle's when I was a kid. You know, the shanties mix uh, grief and joy like whiskey and soda. A lot of uh, singing and eating and dancing and carrying on. Some of the men got so drunk that they took my uncle's body out of the casket and they propped it up so we could watch the merrymaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can laugh about it now. It gave me nightmares. Oh, I don't doubt it. Oh, so dumb. I forget that kids remember everything. I wish I had a dime for every nightmare that we caused them. Oh, we, we made a deal. I didn't think you noticed. I didn't cross my heart. <laughs> Why don't you have any children, Mr. Slattery? Oh, for the, uh, the obvious reasons. I sometimes think that we dedicated professionals are missing a great deal. And our substitutes for love and marriage. Well, I mind isn't a substitute. It's an excuse for living. Do you really care about those Korean children? Or are you just acting in the interests of Rosebury and, and the ruins? Hearts and flowers, all those tender, innocent faces to 
back him up. Mr. Roseberry happens to be absolutely sincere in his concern for those tender, innocent faces. He understands their needs, and he qualifies people with some of the best instincts I've ever seen. Can't rely on instinct. All that Mr. Roseberry wants to know is whether his prospective parents believe in God. Well, there's nothing the matter with that. Faith can cover a multitude of sins. He's naive, and he's being used. Used uh, by people who want to become parents? A child is a human being in itself. It's not a cure for unhappiness or unfulfillment. A child's welfare has to come before people's desire to be parents or a representative's desire to help his constituents. What are we arguing about? We're on the same side, I think. I was in Korea during the I was a nurse in a children's home when our own American planes dropped napalm bombs on it by mistake. Eighty-six children were burned to death on the spot. I was one of the few survivors. Don't tell me about misery. Don't you want to stop it? I'm trying. I'm trying to stop the misery and the heartbreak of the mail-order baby business. I'm trying to stop children from vomiting on each other in these filthy cattle car airlifts from the Orient. I'm trying to stop babies from being rejected at the airport by prospective parents who don't like the shape of their eyes, the color of their hair. Look, there are bound to be inequities. The Department of Social Welfare doesn't bat a thousand, you know. I never said we did, but we try. Maybe you're right about Jim Rowan Slattery. Maybe he is just a poor, misunderstood ex-GI. But what if I'm right? What if this man who has a habit of using a gun to solve his problems is not a fit father? Who's gonna suffer? Little Judy died, who could have been assured of a permanent and secure home with a little more fuss and bother. But your arbitrary decisions could have robbed that little girl of a decent home. The Rowans love her. They, they wanna care for her, they can care for her. Since when is that a bad risk? Since Jim Rowan suffered a mental collapse and tried to kill himself a year ago. special trip down here, Jim, because something's been troubling me. Something that you forgot to tell me. We told you everything, Mr. Slattery. Did you, Jim? Everything important, I think. Well, uh, things that don't seem important very often are. I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. I'm talking about your breakdown, the attempt to kill yourself. I don't know what you mean. About a year ago, with a gun. Now, that's a dirty lie, Mr. Slattery. Those people will dig up anything. Uh, that isn't true? No. It was an accident, Mr. Slattery. Just an accident. Look it up in the police report, if you don't believe it. Hmm. Well, what happened? Do you uh, tell me about it, Jim? Well, sure, it does. Uh... It's one of those things, that's all. I was fooling around with one of my rifles one day, and the darn thing went off. It was a stupid accident. Well, why did they uh, think it was an attempted suicide? They must have had some reason. Well, yes, I guess I did give them a, a reason. What do you mean? Well, you see, when we filled out our application for adoption at the Welfare Bureau, they asked me why I wanted a baby. I, uh, I told them. And what'd you say? I said, uh, well, I told them how I felt when I got out of the service. See. How did you feel, Jim? Well, I, uh, I, I'm frustrated, I guess is the, uh, you see, Mr. Slattery, when I was in the service, I, I felt like a man. I knew my way around. I felt I was part of something important. And then when I got out, I, I could barely support my wife. And uh, 
mean something to somebody? There were um, some tests, and uh, you see, Mr. Slattery, it's uh, well, it's uh, it's my fault that Annette can't have a baby, and um, so I. Well, I, I told them I thought a man was better off dead if he couldn't have a family, be a father. But they turned us down. And then just after that, uh, the accident happened. So I guess they just put two and two together. That's the truth, Mr. Slattery. You've got to believe it. They're just trying to use what happened to take Judy away from us. I'm a legislator. I wonder if you could give me some information on a man named Jim Rowan who resides at 312 Maple Street. What sort of information? A drunk? Narcotics? No. I want to find out if there's an attempted suicide on his record. Oh, well, that would be the records division. Won't do any good. It's after hours. No one here authorized to let you see the information. Why don't you come back tomorrow? We can probably... No, no, no. Uh, could you call somebody for the authorization? I've got an important hearing at 9 o'clock in the morning. Sure. Mr. Chairman, if I could have a moment, please. I'm sorry, Mr. Slattery. We've uh, delayed this matter long enough. No, but Mr. Chairman... We have other matters to dispose of besides your petitioners. Now, we're ready to render a final decision unless you have some further remarks. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I... Uh, I first consented to represent Mr. Roseberry in this matter out of my desire to help two young people in my district keep a little girl that they wanted to adopt. I also wanted to help Mr. Roseberry open the doors of America to the tragic victims of war and deprivation. That's a, a desire that's shared by many people. But the innocence of good intentions can never be a substitute for experience or proven procedures. Since our last board meeting, I've been given reason to believe that my own good intentions were the result of the same emotional involvement that has clouded the thinking of a great many sincere people. Most of these proxy sight unseen placements have happily worked out well. But what about the other side, the other cases? The scores of cases of heartbreak and suffering that have resulted from this system. The inhuman black market in babies. The cruelty of irresponsible or unstable persons who only want children out of some need within themselves. What are you saying? Now, Mr. Rose, are you I saying think... that an orphanage, that the gutter, is better than a home, almost any kind of a home for a child? Mr. Roseberry. No, oh, please, listen to me. He's wrong. There are children that are still dying. Please listen. Sit down, Mr. Roseberry, or I shall have to ask for your removal. Mr. Chairman, I, I in no way... I, I in no way want to discredit Mr. Roseberry, his character, his work, his success in numberless cases, we see the happy results here in this room. But emotional involvement such as his can often lead to serious errors in placement when divorced from proper and orderly legal procedures. Mr. Roseberry, a, a child born in misfortune cannot continue to suffer the day-by-day -day torture of uncertainty and confusion, the agony of, of hope giving way to despair. The Department of Social Welfare and the other accepted fundraising organizations have placed thousands of children with a great deal of painstaking labor and care. Mr. Chairman, if we, if we fail to utilize the greatest competence and skill available to us, then we will be failing the trust that's been placed into our hands. Therefore, Mr. Chairman, I'm suggesting that Mr. Roseberry be allowed to continue his work to continue his work with the Department of Social Welfare. I think they can benefit from his great humanity, his dedication, but surely the greatest benefit would be to the children themselves. 
Thank you, Mr. Slattery, for your well-considered reappraisal. I uh, think this board would like to take a few moments to evaluate your remarks. What have you done? You've let us down. You've let all those children down. Mr. Roseberry, I was at police headquarters before I came to this hearing. It's a matter of record. The investigation proved that Jim Rowan tried to take his own life. He's unstable. One false step shouldn't damn a man for the rest of his life. I examined him. I found him stable and good and kind. Well, I was taken in, too. But Rowan is a danger to himself. He's a danger to that child. Don't you see? He lied to us. The board would uh, like to express its appreciation for Mr. Roseberry's efforts and his humanitarian motives in his adoption work. We feel deeply the responsibility in placing foreign children in American homes. Because of the many risks involved in the cultural, legal, and emotional complexities, the board therefore rules against Mr. Roseberry and declines to issue a continuance of his license. This hearing's adjourned. Mr. Roseberry, we want you to go on working. The children need you. We need you. We could accomplish so much together. It wasn't easy to do what you did. No, it's never easy to hurt somebody who believes in you. You told it to the board, Slattery. Children will benefit. You know, one of them's gonna find that difficult to understand. Did Judy die? It's better that it happens now when she's little. That's if Jim Rowan is willing to let her go without bloodshed. from my house. Listen to me, Jim. I've got to talk to you for a minute. You're a liar. You're a filthy, stinking liar, and we've heard enough of your lies. So get out. Let him come in, Jim. I'd like to hear what he has to say to you. I don't want to hear anything he has to say. Didn't he do enough? Roseberry thinks it's all right. Bolt it. Why'd you do it? Why'd you turn against us? My wife said that she thought you were a fine man. She said she trusted you. I'm sorry. I had to do what I thought was right. Not taking our child away, that's not right. Yes, it is. Yes. If it's best for her, it is. Slattery, they've given her a good home. They're giving the welfare department every reason to believe this isn't a good home. I'm doing what I think is right. But well, Jim, you've got the right to protest what you consider an injustice, but with guns and threats. It was all right in war. Why not here? We're not your enemies. Yes, you are. They're all my enemies out there. Why? Because they don't care whether you live or whether you die. Oh, well, look, Jim, no, nobody's trying to make things tough for you, is it? Oh. You've got it made, haven't you? Sure. You've got position. 
You have money, Mr. Slattery. They know you exist. They listen to you. The people that matter, Jim, won't listen with respect to anybody who tries to force their attention. You're not going to solve anything this way, you know. If you really want Judy, you can take your case to court. I wouldn't have a chance in court. You know that. Get out of my house. Jim. Stay out of this, Annette. Get out. What are you doing? Put her down. Put her down. I'll kill you. Jim, you please. If you kill me, you just might kill Judy. Is that what you want? Is that how much you care about her? What about me? Oh, I'm here, you know. I see and I feel, you know. I, I, I look around, I have wants. Those people out there, they don't care about me. They ignore me like I'm, I'm not even part of their people's world. Yeah, go on, take the kid. I don't care. I never wanted her in my house to begin with, you know that. I don't want her, I don't care what happens to her. Go on, take her. Get her out of there, get her out Give of there. Give me that gun, give me that gun, give it to me. that she'd never have to face those things again. Now she has, thanks to me. Miss Donlan, what can I do? Can I really help you? Of course you can. We need you. Come on, let's get her in the car. Care of her. I'll do my best. And uh, thanks for being so stubborn. That's uh, my excuse for living. So long, Slattery. Obviously, no comment by the And the main